I'm Commander Cory, and this is my favorite playthrough on YouTube. Last time on Mass Effect Legendary Edition, Commander Cory Shepard headed to Luna, the moon of Earth, and took down the rogue VI. After that, she went and visited Elitania, finding that there was a spot that she could put the trinket and learn a little bit about how Protheans interacted with the ancient human civilizations. Hello, my beautiful nerds, and welcome back to Mass Effect Legendary Edition right here on Missile Dine Online. What's up? That's me. That's my channel. Thank you guys so much for checking out yet another episode. Make sure that you subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you know when new episodes are premiering, which, by the way, is every day around 2 p.m. Eastern. And a huge shout out to those of you watching in those premieres. I love hanging out with you guys. It is a pleasure and highlight of my day. So thank you guys so much. Uh, in this episode of Mass Effect Legendary Edition on Insanity Difficulty, we are yet again going to tackle a ton of the side quests that we can in the galaxy by exploring and doing all of that, just like we did last, last, last time. Because we, we, of course, this is a completionist run and we need to do everything. Uh, we will be going to Pharos. That's the next story place. But I asked in the last video uh, what people wanted to see next. And universally, everyone said, side quests. Let's knock them out. So let's get into it. And let's begin Commander Corey Shepard's second journey throughout the cosmos. Galaxy. Whatever whatever you want to call it. But first, let's take a look at her journal and see what she has for assignments. We have the UNC hostile takeover that we got from Helena Blake on the Citadel. We have privateers, missing marines. This one we can't do yet. Besieged base, which is actually something that we can do now that our paragon is high enough. We have Rex and his quest for his family armor. Dr. Salian for Garrus to find this doctor that he wants to bring to justice. The Prothean data disks that we're collecting, the Asari writings, the Torian insignias, the Asari diplomacy that we got from Nisana Dantius. And of course, we have these other collection quests that we are always going to be working on. So it looks like Nisana Dantius has hired us to rescue her sister Dahlia from a mercenary group working out in the Artemis Tau Cluster. And that, my friends, is exactly where Commander Cory Shepard begins her journey today. And the first system that Commander Corey Shepard headed to in her journey was the Macedon system in the Artemis Tau Cluster. Once she arrived there, she had to head to the planet of Shargira. Shar Shar but she didn't yet because there is stuff to scan in this system. So she went to Poralan and she surveyed there to find another Matriarch Delanaga's writings. And scanning the asteroid belt, she found a metallic asteroid that she then surveyed to find yet another source of titanium. And heading to Fargalus, which is a very funny name, she was able to scan for a large concentration of Xenon. 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 The warrior princess. And she discovered this planet of Potovich, which apparently is dreadfully inhospitable to humans, but it is suitable for colonization by the Volus. Negotiations between the Systems Alliance and the Volus' patrons, the Turian hierarchy, have made good progress. Which means that she had one planet to head to, which was Shargila. Taking a squad of Liara and Garrus with her, she descended onto Shargilla. Shark Godzilla. Sensors picked up a nearby source of uranium, a nearby source of magnesium, and yet another crash probe that required an average electronic skills to hack. Sensors also picked up what appeared to be an abandoned camp with an Asari capsule that she could discover. Which contained yet another of Matriarch Della Naga's writings. It's not clear who lived there, but it appeared to have been abandoned for some time. And finally, all that's left was one. A source of thorium. That was everything that could be found on the planet of Sargilla with the final point of interest being this stronghold here. Shepard approached the stronghold and discovered a ton of enemies were waiting for her, including snipers and people with rockets, and it looked to be a deadly, deadly shootout. Immediately, she approached on the Mako and annihilated all of them. She has found the place where these mercenaries, these pirates, have taken Nasana Dantius' sister. So, Shepard took them all out. Only one remained, a pirate sniper taken out. Commander Corey Shepard repaired the Mako and approached the bunker. Once inside, discovered yet another metric ton of enemies. Garrus, Liara, and her all approached 
to take them out. Clearing half the room, they approached to find a giant Krogan was waiting to fight back. Only one enemy remains, which just so happens to be an Asari slaver, oddly enough. Commander Corey Shepard took down the last remaining Asari slaver. It seems that everything was cleared out. But where was Dauntius? Heading into the back of the room, Shepard found new items as well as a hard decryption chest and a hardened wall safe. And finally, investigated the desk that was sitting there. And Shepard discovered evidence that the Asari leading these slavers and Nasana Dantius, the ambassador that sent us on this mission, are sisters. She will return to the Presidium and confront Nasana with this after she's downloaded the evidence. But she wasn't done yet because heading downstairs, she found a bunch of crates that were waiting for her with a bunch of items inside, as well as a medical station that she could decrypt. Commander Corey Shepard was done with Shargilla and the Macedon system, but there was something else that had to be done in the Sparta system here in the Artemis Tau cluster. Admiral Kohoku had asked Commander Corey Shepard to explore the Sparta system to find his missing Marines and potentially find out a little more information about this Armistice Banes. Upon arriving, she scanned a nearby asteroid to find an asteroid cluster that she then surveyed to find yet another Prothean data disk recovered. Exploring the planet of Al Salges, she was able to find yet another rare element, this time plutonium. During the Alliance's pirate suppression campaign in the 2160s, the Batarian Uluam Ranpara was caught with his frigate Tunaran grounded on Al Salges for drive discharge. When challenged by the cruiser, Ranpara refused to surrender. His frigate was destroyed. The debris is thrown across the threatened southern hemisphere. On Antimalka, she was able to find a large concentration of hydrogen. Heading to Edolis, she found that there was an automated distress beacon that needed to be explored, and she was sure, absolutely positive, that this time, it definitely wasn't a trap. So she headed down to find these missing marines. She arrived with a squad of Liara and Garrus. Idolis immediately had a few points of interest, so she headed to the distress signal immediately, seeing if she could find who was there to help out. Seeing the source of the distress beacon in the distance, she approached cautiously, but optimistically. And as she approached, a giant thresher maw appeared out of nowhere. Yet again, she was face to face with her sworn enemy, the thing that had destroyed her entire unit. The Thresher Maw, being severely weakened, burrowed back to the ground. Once it surfaced, she knew that this was the time to remove this threat from this entire planet. And finally, the Thresher Maw was defeated. Receiving 20,000 credits and 1,200 experience for that, she approached the Alliance Marine. These are Alliance soldiers. It appears they were lured here by the distress beacon. Someone specifically set them up. Men were under Admiral Kahoku's command. He'd want to know what happened here. Yes, he would. But that wasn't all that could be found here on Adolis. Quick scans of the area showed a few points of interest. Somehow. Commander Corey Shepard got stuck on the distress. I don't. It's a. And it, it was. It was a problem. In the southern part of the planet, she discovered three mineral deposits. The first, a small deposit of polonium. Second, a deposit of palladium. And finally, a deposit of lithium. But two more things appeared on her sensors. Right by the source of lithium, she found another crash probe, which required a master of electronics. So Tally was called in. And finally, only one more anomaly remained on the map, which appeared to be the body of a mummified Solarian. And she was able to recover another ID tag, this time 
belonging to Captain Malone. And that was all she could do on the planet of Idolis in the Sparta system. So she headed out back to the Normandy. While she was on the Citadel, a man named Gareth asked her to look for his missing brother. He was afraid that his brother's ship may have fallen victim to privateers while traveling through the strenuous system. So that's exactly where she headed. So she headed to the Horsehead Nebula and the strenuous system. Upon arriving, she immediately scanned the planet of Yunthor, where she was able to find yet another League of One medallion. On the planet of Antitara, she was able to survey to find a large concentration of Helium-3. And close to the planet of Zawin, she was able to scan and find the MSV Majesty, which she then scans. It's a Kowloon class modular conveyor of human design. Potentially, this is the ship of the brother of Gareth. Faint trail of radioactive particles, possibly exhaust from a sublight nuclear engine drive, led her toward the nearby planet of Zawin. She landed on the planet with a squad of Liara and Garrus to see if she could find out what happened to the missing brother. When she arrived, she discovered a ton of sources nearby, all sending out separate signals. So she headed towards the nearest one. On her way, heading to the crash probe, she unfortunately was met with yet another Thresher Ma. Finally, the Thresher Ma surfaced, and after a very close battle, she was able to take it down. Now that it was safe to do so, she approached this probe that required hard electronics and got some free items. Oddly enough, after hearing the sound of the Rachni, she headed back to another anomaly that she discovered this time, Ancient Debris, where she once again recovered a Turian insignia, this time from the Chati outpost. Seeking out yet another sensor disturbance, she found this yet another abandoned camp. This time, she activated the generator. The camp's computer noted several locations of interest, including every mineral find on Zawin. So she headed south to the next anomaly. Upon arriving, she discovered what appears to be a corpse and their broken down ship. Lucky for her, though, it was also right next to the source of Iridium. Heading back north, she discovered two more sources of minerals, this time Cobalt and Palladium. But she wasn't done yet as she headed to yet another strange beacon that was a Geth trap. She was ambushed by four Geth armatures that she was able to take down. No problem, thanks to the power of the Mako. Finally, after taking them down, she had just one spot left on the entire planet of Zawin, and that was the mercenary camp where she could find the privateers that she was looking for. Approaching this privateer base was not going to be easy as it was guarded by four Alliance turrets. Not only were there Alliance turrets, but a ton of mercenaries were actually sitting outside waiting for the approach as well. Luckily for her, the Mako is one heck of a machine. After taking down all of the outside defenses, Commander Corey Shepard got on foot to take them out. This time she approached with a squad of Garrus and Tally Enemy and immediately got into a fight as soon as she opened the door. Lucky for her, she was able to use one of the canisters that were nearby to decimate some of these targets. Commander Corey Shepard and her squad were able to take down an entire floor of enemies, and only one sniper remained. After a quick pistol butt to the head, she was able to take down the last Enemy remaining here. privateer. While also picking up some items in the process. Heading into the room on the top floor, she unfortunately found the body of Captain Willem. His fingers were wrapped tightly around a small data pad. Not the result she was hoping for on the planet of Zawin. She promised that she would bring that data pad back to Goroth on the Citadel. But she had other things to do while she was out in space, so she headed back to the Normandy. Remembering the conversation that Commander Corey Shepard had with Helena Blank, she headed to the Gemini Sigma cluster, where she figured she could help take down this evil cartel. The first system that she would head to is the Han system in the Gemini Sigma cluster. 
Upon arriving, she went to the planet of Paravin, where she was able to survey and find yet another Matriarch Delanaga's writings. On Patatonlis, she was able to survey and find another large deposit of beryllium. And finally, she headed to the planet of Mavagon. Surely, this is where she'd be able to find this enemy cartel, bringing with her Liara and Garrus Vicarian. Immediately upon landing, her sensors picked up a few areas of interest, including a deposit of gold and, yet again, another mummified Solarian, this time finding an ID tag belonging to Captain Stranaka and a deposit of cobalt. And heading all the way to the south, she was able to salvage yet another crash probe. Finally, it was time to head to the top of a mountain and face this syndicate hideout, which was being guarded outside by a, a few Alliance heavy turrets, which basically just equals free XP for Commander Corey Shepard. After taking down the turrets, she headed inside to the first syndicate hideout. But when she arrived, it was quiet. A little too quiet. Upon entering into his second room, she was able to find all of the mercenaries were here, including a big Krogan that had been waiting to take her down. Who just melted super easily. Only two more mercenaries remained. One of which was the crime boss themselves. Easy, easy. She was able to destroy him and add some experience. One last mercenary remained. The crime lord was defeated, and Helena was right. These guys had quite the operation going, but that's all going to change. Just one more to go. Of course, Shepard had been around a few times and knew that in this bunker was probably some more items that she could get. One of which was the incredibly good pistol, the Stiletto 7. But there was one more point of interest that she wanted to check out before she headed off of Mavagon, which was up in this corner here. She was able to find a few corpses and a bunch of items sitting here waiting for her at this abandoned camp that she had discovered. Heading away from Mavagon and before she went and tackled the other hostile takeover quest, she went and explored the system of Ming. In Ming, she was able to discover the MSV Worthington, which was, seemed like a place that she had to visit. But before she did that, she explored the planet of Parag, which she was able to survey for yet another large deposit of titanium. On the planet of Altenark, she was able to find yet another League of One medallion. And finally, she figured that she'd explore this MSV Worthington, this ship that seems to be adrift off the orbit of Ant Antiroprus, bringing a squad of Liara and Garrus with her. Seems like this... Looks like the ship's deserted. I was just going to say that. Most of the systems seem to be disabled. Only basic life support appears to be functioning. Of course, there were some items for Shepard to procure as she explored the freighter. Liara and Garrus pointing out that the only systems active on this entire ship is life support. Did you hear that? Sounded like footsteps. That was no accident. The whole place could be a trap. As she explored, fusion traps started going off as she was proceeding through. Her best option was to take them out from ranged as she made her way through the ship. After disabling all of the canisters, finding her way to the very back of the ship, she noticed there were three rooms that she could proceed into. On the left, she discovered a man who appeared to be on life support. A storage locker and computer files sitting in the room with him. Jacob's not going to make it. His brain was deprived of oxygen for too long. There's nothing any of us can do for him now except let him die with dignity. It's what he would want. I'm more worried about Julia now. She's showing signs of severe depression. I gave her some meds that should help, but I better warn the captain. 
It seems that Jacob was on life support. It looks like that machine is keeping him alive. I do not see any brain activity on the readouts. He is dead. This body is just an empty shell. Maybe we should shut the machine down. It's the merciful thing to do. It is your decision, Shepard. But perhaps we should wait until we have more information before we do anything. And that's exactly what she did, going and exploring the rest of the ship to see if she could find any more logs to tell her about what happened here and what happened to Jacob. They say Jacob's gone. They say his brain isn't functioning anymore. And they want to shut off his machines. But Jacob's the only thing in the world that matters to me. I don't know how to help him, but it's tearing me up inside. I just feel so helpless, so damn angry. Dr. Smith gave me some meds to calm down, but I didn't take them. I can't. Not until I figure out a way to help Jacob. I won't give up on him. I won't. Seems like his friend did not want to give up on Jacob. So Commander Corey Shepard went to go find the final computer log by heading to the cockpit. Jacob is showing no signs of brain activity. There's nothing more we can do for him. He wouldn't want to be kept alive by machines, so we're going to disconnect the life support. Dr. Smith is worried about Julia's reaction, though. She can't seem to let Jacob go. The stress is making her implants flare up, causing intense migraines. It'll probably be easier for everyone if we don't tell her until after we shut the life support down. Give her a chance to... Julia, what are you doing here? Why are you... <laughs> seems that Julia lost her mind and that's exactly who ends up attacking us. Julia attacks Liara as we are listening to the last of the computer logs. It seems that she is still surviving here. Just her trying to keep Jacob alive. Unfortunately, Commander Corey Shepard had to take her down. Heading to check on Jacob, Commander Corey Shepard made the only decision that she could. She turned off the life support machine. That was the compassionate thing to do, Shepard. A rather unfortunate end to this missing freighter. There was nothing left for Shepard here, and she headed back to the Normandy. And that was all that she could do in the Ming system. So she headed out, leaving the Gem Gemini Sigma cluster and heading to the Hades Gamma cluster, where she went to the Dis system. Which, of course, upon getting there, scanned an asteroid belt to find another metallic asteroid that she was able to survey for a light metal of lithium. The planet Raisha, she was able to scan and find another Turian insignia, this time from the Trident colony. And on the planet Niarum, she was able to scan to find yet another light metal. Interestingly enough, she decided to scan the planet of Jartar where it's noted for the discovery of the Leviathan of Dis, the apparent corpse of a genetically engineered living starship. The Leviathan was found in the bottom of a crater by a Batarian survey team and estimated to be nearly a billion years old. It disappeared after a visit to the system by a Batarian dreadnought 20 years ago. Since then, the Batarians have steadfastly denied that the Le Leviathan existed at all, and all the more frustratingly when shown recordings of the corpse made by Solarian researchers. You might want to keep this in mind, this planet in mind, as we proceed through the entire series of Mass Effect. But she had only one planet to go to, and that was Klinzel, where she knew the second base was going to be, where she brought her squad of Garrus and Tally to take them out. First thing was first, though. Upon arriving on this planet, her sensors picked up a nearby beryllium deposit. On this planet, she also discovered another anomaly, but in the distance, she saw the base that she had to take down as they proceeded to start shooting at her from miles away. Of course, with the power of the Mako, she was able to put them down, but she saw her target. But she also was able to find a mummified Solarian yet again, this one giving her another League of One medallion. Before heading to teach those criminals some manners, she went and found this crashed probe but yet again, more items. Now you know how Commander Corey Shepard is. She knew where she had to go. The hostile base. But first she thought, hey, there's a source of mineral nearby. 
Let's go pick that up first. Getting another deposit of platinum. And that being everything that she could find here on the planet of Klinsol. So she headed into the base to take down the last of this criminal cartel. Heading inside, she discovered the mines full of Helena Blake's targets. Enemies immediately appeared on her map as they all started rushing in, including some snipers. Only the crime boss and one other of his friends remained. Shepard ran in for the kill, going ahead and stasising immediately the crime boss and being able to do damage now that she had her stasis maxed out. All that remained was a mercenary sniper that was taken down. No doubt, Helena Blake will be overjoyed to learn that these two scum are no longer a problem. But of course, Paragon Commander Corey Shepard isn't going to end there. Heading into the back of the mines, Commander Corey Shepard was able to find yet another room full of stuff that would be needed in her journeys. After looting the entire place, it was time to leave the disk system and go report to Helena Blake. And so she left the Hades Gamma Cluster and headed back to the Horsehead Nebula and the Fortuna system. When she arrived, she immediately scanned the planet of Maganilis, Mag Mag Maganilis, where she was able to find yet again another Taurian insignia, this time from the Rocom outpost. And on the planet of Thur Umlon, she was able to survey and find a deposit of plutonium. Finally, she headed to the planet of Amaranthi, where she was able to meet up with Helena Blake, tell her all about how easy taking down her, her friends were. With a party of Liara and Garrus, she headed to the surface. Directly from where she landed, she was able to find a mineral deposit, this time a deposit of Iridium. In fact, all she needed for the Alliance was three more heavy metals. And a quick scan showed another deposit of Uranium nearby. And the last mineral to be found on this planet was a deposit of Thorium. But she wasn't done yet, as sensors indicated a couple more anomalies to explore before meeting up with Helena Blake. The first of which was yet more ancient debris where she was able to recover yet another Turian insignia, this time from the Galatana colony. And finally, the last point of interest, a crash probe. And finally, it was time to go meet Lena Blake at the engineering outpost. And Shepard approaches the engineering outpost. Definitely recommend having a high intimidate or charm skill before approaching. <laughs> Hello again, Commander Shepard. I owe you a debt of gratitude. With my former partners dead, this syndicate is now mine. I could not have done it without you. I killed them because they deserved it. Now I'm placing you under arrest. Surely you don't think that necessary. Under my leadership, this organization will restrict itself to gambling and smuggling illegal technologies. These crimes are hardly worth your time. If you press the issue, my assistants are very well equipped to deal with you. Luckily for us, Commander Corey Shepard was able to convince her to walk away. This gang has a reputation for drugs and slaving. It's too late to change that. Perhaps you're right. Perhaps this organization has been so tainted by those two idiots that it cannot be redeemed. If I disband the gang, I walk away freely. I have not come so far to be arrested. I would die before going to prison. I would most certainly kill before going to prison. Now, do we have a deal? You're free to go. I don't ever want to see this gang again. If I do... You won't. I'm not so foolish as to break my word to a specter. Now, if you'll excuse me, my men become nervous in the presence of law enforcement agents. <laughs> Goodbye, Shepard. And Shepard was able to end this peacefully, getting her to disband her criminal organization and 
I have a feeling we'll be seeing her again in Mass Effect 2. Of course, just because she was able to end it peacefully didn't mean that she didn't loot the facility when she was done with it. And with that, the hostile takeover was completed and Helena Blake and her criminal cartel were no longer a threat. Now, of course, Commander Corey Shepard could have also have done the Paragon or Renegade Charm or Intimidate options and then still said that they were going to arrest her and this way you would get the experience from fighting them all as well. However, if Helena Blake dies, you don't get to see her again in Mass Effect 2. There's one more mission to undertake before heading back to the Citadel, and that is to go find a missing research team that we heard about the first time we ever visited the Citadel. So by heading to the Hades Gamma Cluster and the a Antius system, Commander Corey Shepard will be able to track them down by heading to the planet of Trebin, where she's able to land and discover what happened to this missing survey team where she headed down with a team of Garrus and Tally. As soon as she landed on the planet, sensors picked up something super interesting coming from the east side. And as she approached, she was attacked by yet again another Thresher Ma. After a long battle, the Mako destroyed the Thresher Ma. And finally, Commander Corey Shepard was able to check out the signal that she received earlier, which is yet again another Turian insignia, this time from the Nemesis colony. She was also able to discover a deposit of uranium before also heading to where the researchers should be, the research base that she found off in the distance. Nobody's been here for a while. But when she arrived, no one could be found. Even searching inside to find people, the only thing she found were, well, more items, which is always good. According to these data logs, the survey team unearthed some kind of alien technology. We should check out the excavation site. Interesting. Could be some answers there. So it appears that they found something else. So she took note of the mine entrance that was nearby the excavation site before heading to other anomalies that she found in the area including a bunch of crashed probes, it would seem, none of which were actually salvageable, and a transmitter tower that she then deactivated as it was disrupting Survey Team's GPS satellites, causing them to crash. It's also worth mentioning that while doing this, Commander Corey Shepard found all of the Turian emblems. She also headed towards the signal for some debris that was found, which appeared to have a bunch of scavengers nearby as well who she was able to take down incredibly easy with the power of the Mako. And she went and salvaged it thanks to the help of the master electronics that Tally possesses. And finally, the last deposit of minerals on this planet was found, this time plutonium. And so with that, she headed to the very final Place that she could the excavation site to find out what happened to the missing research team and prepared for yet another ambush she headed into the mines and heading into the back of the mind she was able to find the missing research team that unfortunately had all been turned into hus so she's going to pop off a little bit and then retreat back so that these don't come chasing after her as soon as they get close She's going to back up and hope that none of them follow into these tunnels here. And finally, she was able to the take down the last husk. Unearthed some alien technology that turned them into mindless fanatics. Whatever they found, it's long gone now. And upon examination of the back, Commander Corey Shepard was able to discover this odd shrine looking thing in the back. Maybe that's what turned this research team into mindless hus. Over there. By exploring down into the back, she discovered even more of the research team as they had been completely annihilated. A ton more in the back. And 
That accounted for all of the Exogenice Ginny survey team. They were converted to these cybernetic husks by devices similar to those used by the Geth on Eden Prime. How they came to be buried on a frontier world so far from Geth territory, though, that was a mystery. And after taking out the rest of the missing survey team, she headed to the back to loot whatever she could. And finally, after exploring everything that she could on Trebin, it was time to head back to the Normandy and make her way to the Citadel to report her progress. Exogeny Corp recently released an official statement regarding their missing survey team in the Hades Gamma Cluster. According to the statement, the remains of the survey team were discovered not far from their abandoned research camp. There were no survivors. It is believed the researchers were the victims of a random attack by raiders or mercenaries. Names will be released after next of kin are notified. And apparently Exogeny kept the missing survey team secret. They don't want that anybody to find out what actually happened. So, the first place that Commander Corey Shepard headed to to report is the embassies, where she could talk to Nasana and tell her what happened to her sister. So, she headed to the bar to fill in Nasana on what happened. Yes, Shepard? Did you find my sister? Dahlia's dead, and I know she was blackmailing you. So, the truth comes out. I hope you're not angry. Surely you can understand why I lied to you. If people found out my sister was a criminal, I'd be considered a security risk. They'd revoke my clearance, or place me on administrative leave until she was apprehended. That is why I misled you. I could not risk you exposing me. But now that Dahlia is out of the picture, it's no longer a problem. I would have helped if you'd just told me the truth. Perhaps you're right. I am sorry. We have trust issues in my family. Obviously. I shall transfer a little something into your account as a token of my appreciation. I'm sure you'll find the amount satisfactory. And because we charmed her, Commander Cory Shepard got a better deal. You're a diplomat on her way up the ranks. Could be handy to have a specter who owes you a favor. You make a good point. Anyone can come up with credits, but I can give you authorization to purchase prototype Asari mods. I will get you added to our manufacturer's preferred client list. I think you'd be very interested in what they have available. Goodbye, Shepard. It has been a pleasure doing business with you. And with that, she was able to get a ton of experience and credits. And now, when she visits certain stores, she'll occasionally see the very rare and valuable Armali Council items available to her. And the next spot that Commander Corey Shepard headed to was the Citadel Tower, where she could go fill in Gareth as she found his brother. Any news? Did you find my brother yet? I found your brother's body. His ship was attacked by privateers. Willem's dead? I guess I should have expected this. When his ship dropped out of contact, I just knew. But I kept hoping he might still be alive. I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you for finding him. It's better to know one way or the other. That's what they say, right? Please excuse me. I need to go make arrangements for his funeral. Not the best way for Gareth's brother to meet his end. But Commander Corey Shepard went and talked to Admiral Kohoku, too. He's going to be very interested to find out what happened to his team. No, I'm waiting. Commander, any word on my missing men? I'm not sure how to tell you this, Admiral. Your men were killed by a thresher maw. A thresher maw? That's not... My men wouldn't just stumble into a thresher nest. Not the entire unit. Somebody lured them there with an alliance distress beacon. Placed it perfectly so they'd land right beside the thresher nest. Damn it. I had a bad feeling about this ever since my team disappeared. An alliance beacon used as bait. My unit wiped out. And nobody seems to know anything about it. Commander, I appreciate what you did. Now I need to do my part. The families of those Marines deserve to know why they died. Anything you need from me? Not right now, Shepard, but I'll let you know as soon as I find something out. And that's all we can do now with Admiral Kohoku. But we're not done yet. Back on the Normandy, we're going to leave and help our friends Garrus and Rex finish what they started. And the first place that Commander Corey Shepard headed was the Phoenix system in the Argus Row Cluster. Message for you, Commander. Just came in over a secure channel. Shepard, 
This is Admiral Kahoku. I found out who set that trap for my men. The ones killed by the Threshamu. Damn, I hope you get this message. It was a group called Serpers. An Alliance Black Ops organization. Top secret, highest level security clearance. They vanished a few months ago. Dropped right off the grid. Nobody knew where they went or what they were up to. They've gone completely rogue, Shepard. They're conducting illegal genetic experiments trying to create some kind of super soldier. I don't have any proof, but I found the coordinates for one of their research worlds. I'm uploading them with this message. They're completely out of control. Somebody needs to stop them. I've done my part. Now it's up to you. This is... This is probably the last you'll hear from me. Cerberus is after me now. I need to disappear before they find me. And that is huge. Commander Corey Shepard learning about the organization known as Cerberus for the first time. Something tells me that that is a big deal. We'll be sure to help out Admiral Kahoku as soon as we deal with Rex's little family armor issue. Commander Corey Shepard had already explored the Phoenix system, so she headed for the planet of Tuntau. And of course, she was asked specifically by Rex to bring him, so he's going to join her squad. And she's also going to bring Tali Zora Naraya. And naturally, after landing on Tuntau, Commander Corey Shepard discovered a bunch of anomalies nearby, places that she wanted to go discover. So she set her sights at the first anomaly to the north. And the first anomaly from a distance looks eerily similar to the pyramids found on Earth. As she approached the pyramid, she found yet another crashed cruiser. With an Asari capsule nearby that she was able to recover for yet another writing belonging to Matriarch Delanaga. And after studying the pyramid for hours, Commander Corey Shepard headed to a nearby deposit of mercury. And thanks to Tally's Master of Electronics, they were able to recover this probe. Beyond the range of and the slightly area. outside of the operational area, she was able to discover another lithium deposit. Now it was time to recover Rex's family's armor. And heading into the mountains, Commander Corey Shepard discovered the last location. This had to be where Ton Actis had Rex's family armor. Outside, she noticed that there were a bunch of snipers waiting for her, but that didn't matter because the Mako is just incredibly strong. Taking them all out, she proceeded inside, where she's going to count on Rex to knock them all dead. This is the place. My armor's here somewhere. And with Rex confirming that this is where his family armor was, Commander Corey Shepard got ready for battle by heading into the next room and firing a warning shot. This made everyone come to her so that she could take them out on her terms. Ton Actis himself approached while fighting off the rest of his troops. All that was left was Ton Actis as he goes down and just a few more of his pirate soldiers. Checking out the back room, Commander Corey Shepard, while fighting, was able to get some items. Including new armor that was even better than what she had previously. And so she headed upstairs to take out the remaining pirates. And leveled up in the process with only one sniper left. and checking in the room that's upstairs. Commander Corey Shepard was able to find a ton of items, including a wall safe that needed to be decrypted. This is it. I can't believe my ancestors ever wore this piece of crap, but at least I've got it back. I'm glad we could help you get it back. I might just be starting to like you, Shepard. Rex touches his grandfather's armor. His expression was thoughtful, perhaps. The Krogan are hard to read. He shakes off his bemusement 
and gripped his gun with renewed purpose. It was time to move on. And that was everything that Commander Corey Shepard could do for Erd Not Rex. So she headed to the only place she could to help out Garrus. Which meant she needed to head to the Herschel system in the Kepler Verge. And when she arrived, she was able to scan for this rocky asteroid, which she was then able to survey for another heavy metal, this time platinum. While she couldn't land on any of the planets in this system, she was able to find the MSV Fidel, where supposedly the butcher known as Dr. Salian, Garrus' sworn enemy, is hiding out. Now going by the name Dr. R. Hart. And of course, Garrus did ask us to take him, so we are going to bring Garrus with us. And Liara is going to join our squad as well. As we arrive on the ship, we notice immediately that enemies have been detected. And these aren't just any enemies. These are enemies that we're going to be seeing a lot of once we get to the planet of Pharos. Commander Corey Shepard had no idea how to deal with these test subjects, similar to the Hus that we've been dealing with. These are enemies that you do not want getting close to you whatsoever. As one gets close to Liara, instantly taking her out. Liara's biotics coming in incredibly helpful. Only one test subject remains. And Garrus and Commander Corey Shepard were able to take it out. Heading to the back of the ship, hopeful to find Dr. Hart, they proceeded to the only room that they could. Thank you. Thank you for saving me from those things. Commander, that's him. That's Dr. Salion. What? My name is Hart. Dr. Hart. Please, get me out of here. Are you sure it's him? Positive. There's no escape this time, Doctor. I'd harvest your organs first, but we don't have the time. You're crazy. He's crazy! Please, don't let him do this to me. We'll take him in, drop him off with the military. But we have him. We can't let him get away. Not again. If he dies, we'll never know what he's been up to, or how he did it. We'll take him in, interrogate him, and he'll serve his time. I... Okay. You're right. You're a very lucky Salarian. You owe the commander your life. Oh, thank you so very much. And he'll try to attack us, but we can shoot him in and the so back. He dies anyway. What was the point of that? You can't predict how people will act, Garrus, but you can control how you'll respond. In the end, that's what really matters. Yeah. I don't think I ever met anyone like you, Commander. Well, I guess we're done here. Salion's medical equipment was stained with the blood of many species. Pale blue, violet, orange, and more than a few dark red. But his work was ended here, and it was time to head back to the Normandy. Not without looting everything, though. And with that, back on the Normandy, Commander Corey Shepard had to check in with her squad mates. So, she approached Garrus first. Commander, I... What can I do for you? Something bothering you? It's Saren. I'm starting to wonder whether we'll ever find him. He's always one step ahead of us, and he's got those damn geth. We're getting close, Garrus. We'll find him. I wish I had your confidence. I just can't stand the thought of him getting away with everything he's done. I know you're doing everything you can. And if anyone can catch him, it's you, but if there's anything else I can do to help, anything, just tell me what you want me to do, and I'll do it. I understand your concern, but we will find him. Just make sure you're ready to go when we do. Yes, ma'am. You can count on me. Thanks for hearing me out. I appreciate it. Can I ask you something, Commander? What is it? Are you worried that the Council might be protecting Saren? I mean, they were really dragging their heels before. What if we find him, bring him back to the Citadel, and they refuse to act? I get the feeling this isn't a question. Speak your mind, Garrus. Well, maybe we shouldn't give them the chance, Commander. In my opinion, Saren's too dangerous to be kept alive. Too much could happen. He could escape, or the Council might let him go. If we find him, when we find him, 
I say we make sure we stop him permanently. If Saren won't listen to reason, if he forces my hand, I'll kill him in a heartbeat. But only if it's absolutely necessary. But what's the point in keeping him alive? It just gives him an opportunity to escape or convince the Council to listen to him. And what about the Geth? They might try to free him. We know more about Saren's plans than anyone. But what do we really know? If we just kill him, we lose the chance to find out. Yeah, I see your point. Do you really think there's more to know, other than the fact that he's a raving lunatic? Maybe, maybe not. But it's not a chance I'm willing to take. Yes, ma'am. Interestingly, Garrus didn't mention anything about our interactions with Dr. Salion. Rex, though, will certainly be appreciative that we've received his family armor. Shepard. So you'd rather be a merc than help your people? I'm a fighter. It's what I do. Aren't you at all worried about what will happen to the Krogan? What the hell do you want me to do about it, Shepard? I'm tired of sticking my ass on the line and getting nothing for it. So you're just giving up on your people? I gave up on fighting for a lost cause. I'm no hero, Shepard. Bottom line, killing for credits simplifies things. You ever think about helping your people? I try not to. But there's a lot of Krogan mercs out there. I'm always running into them. Half the time I'm being paid to kill them. But that's just part of the job. You don't get to pick who your enemies are. How long have you been a merc? Long enough. I took my first contract right after I left my home system. It's good work, but doesn't kill you. I get the feeling you enjoy your work. Sure. You get to see the galaxy on someone else's credits, and most days end with a good fight. I've tried more organized fighting, private armies and such, but it gets too messy. I fight best on my own, or in very small groups. I don't like people relying on me, and I bloody well don't like relying on them. You must have family other than your father. Don't you miss them? No. Now that I have my family's armor again, there's nothing left for me. So long, Rex. Sure. Well, that was the closest thing we'll get to a thank you. And we can check our journal entries for those assignments that we just completed. Rex was very happy that you recovered his armor. Apparently it's not very good, but it does have sentimental value. Well, sentimental for a Krogan. And for Garrus, we found Dr. Salion and tried to arrest him, but died trying to fight you off. Whatever sick experiments he was conducting are now over. Garrus seems relieved now that it's over, and Dr. Salion is no longer free to cause havoc. But they didn't really say much to us. Kind of rude. And my friends, with that... We are finished with this episode of Mass Effect Legendary Edition right here on Missile Dine Online. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. It was a big episode. It took me a long time to do. Uh, so apologies if it was late for those watching in the premieres. Which, by the way, a huge shout out to those of you watching in these premieres. Uh, sincerely appreciate you guys doing it. And I love hanging out with you guys all the time. Uh, it's awesome. And, and thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for your patience as we proceed on this series. In the next episode, we will be going to Pharos and taking down some of our story stuff we only have two planets right now that we can go to for the main story of mass effect and that's exactly what we're going to do in the next episode thank you guys so much for watching and remember never give up never surrender to the thresher ma because we killed a lot of those in this episode